Previously on Saving Jupiter. Kara and Jupiter were truly an unstoppable, impeccable team. Just a week after Kara and Jupiter had claimed their third round title for the show jumping classic in Jorvik, Kara sold Jupiter to an unknown buyer unexpectedly. No one knew why she did this or where Jupiter went, but in a flash, he was gone. And just like Jupiter, Kara herself was gone next. I don't know how I hadn't seen it before. It was THE Jupiter. The Jupiter that I had seen at competitions countless times before and been in awe of his form when he was show jumping. As I got closer to him, I couldn't help but think why Kara would sell this sweet and beautiful horse. How he ended up in Golden Leaf and how he ended up in my pasture. I don't know what Kara did or where she went, but there was more to this that I needed to know. That night, I decided to review the tapes of Kara and Jupiter one more time. As I watched the last known film of them riding in a competition, something fell out. A business card from Kara herself. Assumingly to the Baronesses, it said, Thanks for everything. She left behind a phone number. I knew I couldn't leave this information to just myself, but I wasn't ready to share it with anyone else. So, I did what anyone would do. I dialed the phone number. Which leads us right back to the beginning. Hi everyone, it's Avery Dawnside and welcome Avery. back to the phone. It's her. Hello? Oh, Sally dear, I'm so glad you finally answered the phone. It's your grandmother. I've been calling you for hours. I think you might have the wrong number. I'm so sorry. Oh. Well, then who is this? My name is Avery Dawnside. I don't know I... anyone named Avery. Ugh. Sally gave me the wrong number. Sorry. Bye. No worries. Bye. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope Sally calls her grandma, but that is not who we expected it to be. Kara was not calling me, and looking back, I don't know how Corinne would have known that I'm expecting a call from Kara, because I haven't actually told anyone about what I know. So, whoops. <laughs> back to a more serious note, though, I do need to get to the bottom of this and figure out where Kara went and what I'm supposed to do with Jupiter. He's just been hanging out in the pasture with the other horses so far, and he seems like he's having a good time, but I don't want to be holding onto someone's horse that isn't my own, especially if there's something bad going around. So I'm going to go and head to the library and see if I can get more information out from the Baronesses. Lately, I've been wondering how I didn't know about Cara Marie Delvis before when I found Jupiter at first. I went to the Baronesses with no intention knowing that they were connected to the event and what I found was such a surprise that it made me think, why did the Baronesses give me the box in the first place? Why is this something that has been kept so underground from the Silver Glade Equestrian Center and why isn't it more well known so that people can search for Kara? The only way I was going to get direct answers was to go to the person who gave me the sources in the first place. The Baroness. The Baroness family has run Silverglade Equestrian Center since the beginning, so I knew she was the only person that would know the entire history of Kara if I went directly to her, especially because they seemed so close in the articles and videotapes I had found. When I asked the Baroness if there were more boxes that I could look through, she declined immediately and said that there were none open to the public. That seemed really confusing to me because why wouldn't this be open to the public if Kara was still missing? She nodded and said she understood my discrepancies, but she couldn't give me any more information. My last hope to ask was Godfrey. Godfrey has driven every Silverglade Equestrian member since the beginning of time. He said he had driven Kara, but he couldn't give information because that was private. Leaving Silverglade with even more confusion than I'd come with left me extremely discouraged. Until... As my phone rang in my pocket, I quickly hurried over to the nearest corner to take the call, just in case it was Kara. Hello? Avery, it's Tara, the stable hand at Silverglade Equestrian Center. I know you don't know me super well, but I overheard what you were looking for, and I have the answers that you need. If you go down to the cellar, all the way on the farthest end of the Silverglade Equestrian land, go into the cellar, down the stairs, 
and look for the first door on your left. You'll find a closet of boxes. In those boxes is what you're looking for. Please don't tell anyone I told you this. I'm not supposed to say. Bye. Okay, so it's really dark and creepy down here and super dusty, so I'm gonna make this quick, but I found the box that Tyra just told me about. It looks like it has the leftover information of Kara in it, so I'm gonna head home and hopefully no one sees me and check out what's in the box and get this dust off me. Later that night, as I reviewed the tapes, I realized I had found the other part of Kara's life. As I delved deeper into Kara and Jupiter's show jumping career, it became evident that Kara had started to disappear long before she went missing in Yorvik. The Kara I once saw in videos with a smile on her face and happy bright eyes had disappeared. It was now replaced with a blank stare and no emotion in the photos. I came across some more tapes of Kara and Jupiter in show jumping arenas. Except this one was a little bit different. Their confidence had disappeared and Kara seemed nervous and jittery, causing Jupiter to refuse his first jump ever in the show jumping arena. This trend continued as they entered the flat work arena in the same show, but Kara just seemed off. It's like her body language had completely transitioned and she forgot how to ride. Jupiter was confused, but he continued to push through, hoping that Kara would send him the right signals, although I had a feeling that this wasn't going to be the case. Jupiter, confused by Kara's signals, reared, and then ended up bolting completely across the arena because Kara was tense, and he thought that meant to go faster like they did in the show jump arena. Kara did her best to collect Jupiter, but at this point he was spooked. This was not the rider on top of his back that he knew. The Jorvik reporter took this event as a publicity moment. This was the first time Kara had ever had a fault moment in the arena. Kara broke down after this and left the arena crying something that no one had ever seen before from the pair. Even one judge commented, We've seen Kara at so many shows. She's incredible, but in a sense, she is too credible. At such a young age, the pressure is bound to get to every rider at some point. It's just a shame that for Kara, this moment had to be caught in the arena. The tapes continued, and Kara and Jupiter's faults only increased. Jupiter continued to refuse jumps, they were rushing small fences and going in crooked, and it seemed as if the team together had lost their spark completely. The media again took note of this and continued to document their decline. After claiming their third round title for the Jorvik Jumping Classic, Kara and Jupiter entered one last show. In this show, they thought everything would go fine, but you could tell that it wasn't as Jupiter refused jumps, they were sloppy and rushing once again. The media began to attack Jupiter directly, claiming that he was burnt out and didn't have it in him anymore and that he should just retire. But none of those tapes or reports was what surprised me the most. This was. <laughs> I don't think I can do this. I don't know who's watching this, but my name is Kara and by now you probably know that I've disappeared, but this is me before I leave Jorvik, and I just need someone to know that I can't stay here because I'm not safe. I've left everything I need to know, and you need to know in the letter I sold Jupiter to a good home, but I've got to go catch my bus now. This is the last you'll see of me. <laughs> Bye, Jorvik. I love you. What did Kara mean that she wasn't safe? What does this letter say? It's pretty dark and I don't have much time, but I've got to write this down in case anything happens to me. There needs to be a true story out there somewhere. If you're reading this and don't know, my name is Cora Marie Delvis, but now you should know that I am the girl that went missing. To tell the whole story is too much, but to not tell it at all would be digging my own grave. About six months ago, I began receiving threats after having a sudden decrease in the titles I was winning. I owe people money. My placings and shows have caused lost bets, putting my payments on a route of failure. Jupiter's safety has been threatened on multiple occasions and I fear for his safety as well as my own. I've decided to leave Jorvik behind to move on to a new life, one without Jupiter, one without riding. To be clear, Jupiter is an incredible horse. None of this was ever his fault. He's in safe hands now. This will be the last you hear of me in Jorvik. Love, Kara. Kara was being threatened. Jupiter was not safe. Jupiter isn't safe. 
Where did Kara... What, what happened to Kara? I... I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to call you back. I can't talk. Hello? How did you get this number? Wait, Kara? Who's asking? No one's called me that in a really long time.